How's it going, everybody? Hi. I'm with Mark Martinez here, and we're sitting here yeah. to play one of his favorite games. But before we do, let's ask him. So, I know you have other projects on the net and everything. Yeah. So tell us more about yourself. Uh, my name is Mark Martinez. Um, I am a comic creator. Um, and... Uh, I'm pretty cool, I think. I think I'm a cool guy. <laughs> no, he is. Trust um, me. <laughs> I, I would hope so. Um, Jonathan asked me to be a part of this. Wait, can I say your name? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not yeah. like your alias. No, I'm Dr. not. Dr. No. Professor Chaos. No, I'm not. Um, that was way back when I was younger, but that's yeah. cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he asked me. He asked me to be a part of this, and I thought it would be a cool idea. And yeah, I make comics right now. I'm working on a comic called Millennial with my friend Matt Mears, and. Um, I also have like on my on my website Tumblr page thing. I have some comics that I've done um, independently or with with people, um, mostly with people because I I don't really draw, but I write more than I draw. And um, what else do I have to say? Um, no, anything you feel comfortable with. Yeah, I, I I make comics mostly. I've done other things before. Um, I've done I've been I've acted in short films. I've been in bands. I've done a lot of stuff but like what I want to be when I grow up is a comic book creator yeah yeah <laughs> that's so, a cool sweet job I so um, yeah um, I, I yeah anything what else do you want to know um no I'll put all your information in the bottom of the description don't worry his books are actually pretty cool yes, I read a few they're very cool um, oh, I, I, oh, let me, I also I, I, forgot, I don't want to cut you off I'm it's also fine. the editor for I'm currently editing an anthology book um, for the Sketchy Bug group in Manhattan Beach, California at the Comic Bug. We have uh, a bunch of cool creators and we're all joining forces to make a, an anthology book. It's going to be awesome coming out in a few months. Hopefully before this, or when this comes out. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, this, this video will be out soon enough. Oh, okay, okay. So, I don't know, I don't know. So, um, yes. Where's so, Cassidy? I'll update the description and yeah. when the book is out. Yeah. And the reason I brought him here is it's, it is my first episode, and I do want to bring him along because he has a really cool game that actually inspired him to write comics. Yes. And tell us the name of the game you're about to play. Yes, we're playing Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Um, Jonathan asked me to pick my favorite game. Uh, this was not my first choice, which it should be because it's my favorite game. But originally, I was just going to play Contra because I didn't, I didn't know what the premise of the of the, of the the show was. Um, and I was going to go, yeah, fuck it, let's play Contra. Oh, wait, can I say that? <laughs> Don't worry, we believe that. Okay, yeah, let's play Contra um, for the kids. And uh, but, no, but then I thought about it, I, I thought, well, what's a game that, that is, is, has had influence on me, at least creatively? Um, I chose Soul Reaver. Um, this is the Dreamcast version that we're playing. It's a pure version. Yeah, I, I originally played this on PlayStation back when it came out, um, like, 16 years ago, I think? Yeah, 16. No, no, it was probably more than that. It's like 18 no, no, it years was, ago. It was during the 1998, 99? It should say in the back of the box. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to look at it. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I chose this game. It's more so the series has influenced me because I, I can come back to it and learn a lot creatively. It was... Um, it was directed by Amy Hennig, who most people now know her for from the uh, the was it the Uncharted yeah series? the Uncharted the series. Uncharted series. Does she have involvement with with uh, Ratchet and Clank or anything? Um, I'm not aware of that, but I heard people they said she has. Okay, well she yeah she she's had a lot of influence on on the, um, you know Uncharted. She's she's the director of Uncharted, and she's and also some of the writer. Of yeah, she also wrote wrote Soul Reaver, and, and um, creatively speaking, she she did a lot. This franchise was given to her, and then she kind of made it her own with with a um, with reverence to what came before. And I think it's it's probably like it's my favorite game of all time, the game series. And this one specifically, I think it was the first one that kind of like hit me hard in terms of what you could do with storytelling, at least in video games. But also in general, like overall, what you could do with the story and, and character work and, and all that. Yeah, and if you really want to find out more about this game, it's still on the PlayStation Network, on the PS3 and PS4, and mm -hmm. Steam. And the previous game, what was the previous game one that influenced to gravitates more around that, around her um, decision how to continue of the game? Oh, do you mean the, the before? The before one. Yeah, before yeah. Song. Originally, it was it was Blood Omen, uh, Legacy Game Blood Omen. And that was done by a different team, um, 
and it was felt like a dark Zelda. I, I it was more. It was more like Diablo feel to it. Though. It had. It was like Zelda, but like an American evil Bizarro Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was like like I said, the gameplay yeah. was more like Diablo two ish. Yeah. But the story was really great still. It's interesting because in that game, the protagonist from that game becomes the villain in this game. And I didn't play that one. I actually played this one first. And then I went back to it later. And then I played the rest of the series. Same here. I did yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And it was great. It's actually a great idea to do it that way because story really draws you into the world it's, more. It's kind of like how you would watch the Star Wars movies. Don't watch the prequels first. Watch the original trilogy because that comes after. And then watch the, the prequels. Yeah, if you want to watch the prequels, I'm not condoning or condemning if you want to watch it's, it's totally your bag. I have my problems with them. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's this is like the original trilogy and the prequel is the prequels. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Oh, wait, no. I'm in the... I'm in the to be fair, like you uh, said, he played the PlayStation first, so he's not used to the Dreamcast Yeah, I haven't, I haven't played the, the Dreamcast version, I think. Ooh, this is the opening cinematic. It's really cool. I'm going to show you. Plans tell tales of him. Few know the truth. He was mortal once, as were we all. However, his contempt for humanity drove him to create me and my brethren. I am Razia, firstborn of his lieutenants. I stood with Cain and my brethren at the dawn of the Empire. I have served him. So silky. Over time, it's very hard to keep this huge trust and war. Divine. Cain would enter the state of change and emerge with a new gift. Some years after the master, our evolution would follow. Until I had the honor of surpassing my lord. Like roped in because of all this, they're gonna be like, "Oh no, I wanted to see what happened," and then that's like a perfect incentive to go put, buy the game yourself. Yeah. For my transgression, I earned a new kind of reward. To be fair, it was only this open that got me to buy the game. Yeah, this uh, this opening is what what like sold me because it's just it's beautiful and it sets up like you don't need to know it doesn't set up too much or, or give away too much i would say um and you're you're intrigued like what's going on why that escalated quickly i Razio, was to suffer the fate of treating the demetrius at least that's what they tell you in the beginning Tumbling, burning with white hot fire, I plunged into the depths of the abyss. Unspeakable pain, relentless agony. Time ceased to exist. Only this torture and a deepening hatred of the hypocrisy that damned me to this hell. Such big words. This was cool because I remember I was like, that's that's a cool image. An eternity passed, and my torment receded. Back from the precipice of madness. The thing that still has destroyed me. Yeah, it's really much more This is a little, little king thing he has. If you look at it closely, it looks like he's tearing. Uh, oh, yeah, it lines up with his eyes. Yeah. Raziel's like this weird nightcrawler ripoff that works. Because he's a blue skinned guy who, who can teleport. <laughs> he could teleport later on. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, uh, I, I never realized the connection. I know you, Razier. You are worthy. What Tony nice James is this? Back Notre Dame. What beautiful form is this? Oh, I got a good hand. 
voice actors for this yeah. game. Yeah. This would be a release. Yeah. This, this has some of the best voice acting I've ever heard. Not, not just like quality of sound, but like just the story. It's not over dramatic. Kind of, like I, would, I, 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 I know you like Metal Gear Solid, but I don't like the voice acting because it seems like too. It was forced to over the top. Uh, I think. Yeah. No, no, I agree. Like, oh, like Metal Gear had a good story, but the voice acting was like some par with it. Mm -hmm. But when you play later on in Metal Gear, the, the voice actors started learning more about the series and then they yeah. toned it down. The story we just got off. Hey, you're that ninja. Like that's uh, that's not all I remember from from, from Metal Gear the first one. <laughs> I don't blame you. Like after that, I think I want to stop playing. But I was such a fan of Metal Gear. Well, I like Metal Gear too. I'm not, I'm not bashing it. No, it's not. It's just it does. It, it, it's a different game, and, and there are different sensibilities behind the creators. Uh, or if you prefer, avenge yourself. Sound your dispute with Cain. Because it shows him in the background, and it front like he's controlling the world. Yeah, this game's pretty deep in that. Uh, it, it, it has good staging, I would say, and, and like just composition, visually, like for these cutscenes, it, it's 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 very well done, and it, it has a great sense of dramatic structure. Um, it's like you're a guy, you're betrayed by the person you serve, and now you want revenge because you you didn't deserve this. It's like a basic um, Shakespeare play. It is like a play on game. Yeah, it reminds me of the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh. Um, I, would, I would say that's probably the best thing compared to him. Laying a path across great spans. And this is where the teleportation happens. The yeah. Base to it. Yeah. And I always like the, the aesthetics behind this. Like this has a very um, like Mayan or Aztec influence, but then you get out into the actual world later and it has this very heavily Gothic, gothic into it? I, I would say gothic, but also it's like post-apocalyptic gothic, which yeah. is like, I've never, this, this is the only game I've ever seen that in, um, or, or media, if, if I, yeah. you know. We'll say media to be safe, but, but yeah, it's true, like, it's, it's goth and post-apocalyptic, mm -hmm. just like, it's post-goth, it's like, like the cure in Mad Max. <laughs> Here's the cool thing about Raziel, he used to be a vampire, and he's in the part where the only way he gets health is his soul. Yeah, that, that's, that's an interesting thing because I like, I, when I first played this game, and then maybe into my teenage years, when I was all angsty, um, I was really into it. Vampire fiction like Dracula, not Twilight, but I mean, if you're in that, it's cool. I mean, I don't care, but, but it's like, not for me. But like vampire stories yeah. that actually have death. Yeah, it, it seems like a like a progression where if if vampires feed on blood, which um, some people say, oh, blood is life, um, like ball is life. Uh, <laughs> It, you know, the natural extension would be uh, if a vampire died. If a, what is a vampire version of a vampire? This is like super vampire. They feed on your soul. Um, so I thought that was a cool idea. Your wings are ruined. They are not without purpose. Take hold of them as you leap, and they will carry you across this chasm. Chasm. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> it's the exact same same setup as the PlayStation. Yeah. The only thing that makes a difference is the D-pad and the but Yeah. But the D-pad works fine. Look at the Morlocks. Who are the scavengers of the underworld? Their fellow hunters please comfort souls, spirits who now shall never find their rest. These guys are naked. Weird. And let's get down to like, how did you found this game? And, like, uh, a lot of people couldn't even, like, when you talk about it, people look at you like you're insane. No, yeah, a lot of people don't know this game, and, or at least may, if a lot of people do know it, they, I don't know those people. <laughs> um, I found it, uh, like, in a demo, like, okay, PlayStation Magazine used to have, like, a demo. And it was this, all the yeah, underground. Or sometimes when, when the underground died out, 
it just became Sony and PlayStation official magazine. Yeah. And that's where more of the Soul Reaver demos kept on coming out at that time. Yeah, I I saw it in, in, in a demo, I think, somewhere, a demo disc or, or yeah, because there was no YouTube where you could preview trailers or um you know, fake or you know, yeah. social media where people would share things where you could see them. So I think I saw it in a magazine. I mean, it might not have been. It may have been a game pro. It, it might have been, been game. Yeah, it might. It might have been. It was some game magazine, and I saw it and I thought it looked cool uh, because I was young and impressionable. And cool things are cool. Um, yeah, and I saw it, and I originally I didn't even know it was about vampires. I just thought visually it was, it was very appealing to my sensibilities at that time, and it still is, I would say. It still is, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to Like, this game and the series still holds up to yeah. compared to any other game series out there. Yeah, I, I, I say it still holds, holds up, just not just, um... Uh, like, look beyond the graphics, just... Think of the story. Story and gameplay. gameplay. Like, like, kind of like how you, if you would go back and play Mario Brothers, like, by today's graphic standard, it's not anything amazing, but it's fun to play. And this is fun to play. I, I, even though I know the story beats, it's, it's one of those things where I can constantly come back to it and discover something new that maybe I didn't notice uh, the first time. Oh, I'm trying to guide you. Oh, I, I know where to go. I just wanted to see if, like, <laughs> I, was, uh, so I was talking about Discovery. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I discovered it by chance, and I followed it, and I, I kept following it, and it was never anything, even though it didn't never reach greatest hits. Like, yes, it, it didn't reach greatest hits. That's the, the sad part. Sony did not give it a greatest hits, but years later, when the PlayStation One was dying out, Eidos thought of the collector's editions, and the collector's editions will come with games in the bundle. And the, the way they did the Soul Reaver bundle was Legacy of King Blood Omen, Soul Reaver, and Fighting Force, like some beat em up game. Yeah, but I, it, oh, I remember we saw it in the game on Holy War and Gex, I think. Yeah, saw, yeah on yeah. Gex, it was a video trailer, and it didn't even show vampires or anything, it just showed Rosie all running in cliffs and showing the surroundings yeah, of the area. Yeah, and the souls look different, too. Yeah. And Unholy War, also same thing, video. The only player by demo was a very Akuji Artemis. Yeah, uh, uh, Akuji was a cool game, too. Um, I, I think uh, this game kind of, I, I would call this game the Big Lebowski of video games for me because it, it, it's a good game and it's really fun, but not a, at least at the time, well, Big Lebowski's gotten popular over time, but... Also has its face of Yeah, but it, at the time, like, nobody really knew, knew about it. I knew maybe, like, one guy in middle school who, like, knew it. Um, you knew it. I've been, I know John from before. Like, I'm not trying to, like, pretend that, like... No. This is my first time meeting him. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I played it with him when we were younger. Um, oh, I gotta kill him now. Hold on. I gotta kill this guy. Oh, he didn't. He didn't die. And there's three ways to kill vampires too. They went basic, old school too. Like water, um, impale, and sun. Yeah, it, it's it's very elemental. Like uh, it's an interesting take on the vampire mythos, which I thought was cool. And. It takes a while. Uh, it, no, you, it's, it's, you gotta let it let it let it run free because the condition detection is perfect. Later, dude. And the PlayStation official magazines did demos, but the way they did their demo was instead of like giving a piece of the game for the storytelling, no, you actually play the sub parts of the game like in this game, you get like special abilities, but you have to do this whole puzzle, and they took those as demos. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love puzzle games, so that, that was one thing. Uh, I love puzzle games. This incorporates puzzle games very nicely, where they're, they're very simplistic in what you have to do, but how you do that is not exactly an easy thing to figure out. Like, you have to really use your brain power. You're moving a box, sure. But you know how do how do you use that? Do you climb it? Is it part of a bigger machine? Um, and the puzzles do get really complicated later on in the game too. Yeah, eventually you have to use like stuff with gears and like no, because you shift. Um, if you've been watching the video, uh, if you your character can shift between the material realm, which is where we live, you know, like meet space, and. Uh, 
shift between a spectral realm. And so when you go into the spectral realm, everything kind of warps. Um, and when that happens, uh, you have to know how to manipulate that according to what you're doing in terms of puzzles. Around these walls were the pillars of Nosgar, the seat of King's Empire. How hungry now appeared collapsing into the dust of its own magnificence. And yet, I had only just emerged. In the instant between my execution and resurrection, centuries had apparently passed. Um, going back to like my comics background and all that, I think this, uh, this game in particular did the internal monologue very well, which is something you see in comics a lot. Uh, if there, in reality, this character isn't really talking to anyone, he's just thinking all this, and so you're hearing his other thoughts. And in comics, um, I actually have some right here. Uh, I don't know, is this legal? Can I show this? Yeah, you can show it. <laughs> you can always blur it out. Yeah, I'll blur it out. But, but, um, but people will find out. But yeah, like right. people, like in comics, there's always like internal, you know, monologues going on. And um, that that was not planned, actually. Uh, yeah, they always have uh, internal monologues going on. And this was an interesting take because you don't really see that in movies. Or video games, at least like at, up until this point when this game came out, um, and it does for me influence how how dialogue works in terms of internal on that. Uh, I'm kill this guy. <laughs> I know I'm doing the interview, but I gotta like no, no, it's cool. Like, take like care I said, business. you gotta take care of business. Yeah, you get rid of feel yeah. your feel your all the love and so yeah. Honestly, like I have, I have a very like heavy inclination to just like use the cheat code so I can use all the cool power ups. But I wish you would right now. Yeah, no, no, right now I won't. I won't. Because I, I would love to see someone approaching this game. It's not that expensive. At Steam, it's only five bucks. So yeah, I mean, on PlayStation Network, it's like ten. Do you remember when you, when when, uh, when we used to get code books? Like, oh yeah, tips buy and the tricks. And tips and tricks, or like one thousand codes, or the big code book, and all that. Um, this was one of those games where you used that because. Um, I wasn't as smart as I am now. Oh, I, I just, I just don't. <laughs> that's a good example. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good example. You're not smart as like I'm not, as, I'm not as smart. As, apparently, I'm still not smart. Um, this is cool. This is a cool weapon. This is one thing about this game that I noticed is that you don't really use swords. And up games up until this point use swords, but here you use a lot of spears. And spears are better for impalement. In besides spears, you actually use fire. You use spears. Oh, yeah. Later in the game, you get a special cool sword, but we can't talk about that. We can't talk about, can't talk really. about it. Well, we kind of already spoiled it, but like that's the best weapon in the well, game. Well, it's not really a sword. That's why I said it's like a special sword, but we can't even get into. But you use the word sword in in the in how you describe oh, yeah. it, so <laughs> so uh, I guess you, you just made your point. Move, move, move. Uh, yeah, I. Much walking this game. <laughs> well, this game is very time because they're like this really stretched out your gameplay a lot. Like, yeah. But it was worth it though because even you can play the whole story mode, just the story stuff, and you don't even know what story, what part of this triggers the story or not because it's open world. Yeah. But, that, that was that was one thing about this game that that was new at the time in that it used this this engine that specifically loaded as you explored. Rather than you explore an area, okay, like in Legend of Zelda, you go into a room and then you shift, and then it's loading the room as it does it. Here you're walking, and it it's loading it it's as, rendering in real time yeah. for you to walk into it. Yeah. And at the PlayStation, they didn't really do a good job at it. It took a while, but when you bought the Dreamcast version and the PC version, it just loads up quick. Yeah, it, it's it's seamless. Um, I mean, here you can kind of see it in the in the background. Oh, this is, okay, if you're watching the cinematic, is where he dies. You're gonna strut. This, at least, had remained constant. The endlessly swirling vortex of the abyss. My tomb and the room of my rebirth. See, like, the symbol is like heavy. Once you're not switching on this tomb, these pits gave me my bears. My clan territory was to the west. I was anxious to see how many descendants have fared during the centuries of my absence. The 
cool thing about this game is it is open world and you do you do keep playing it for hours to get every little thing. But the thing is in the story parts of the game you don't really need the stuff. Yeah, this was it was cool because I don't think I can't really recall any games up until like this game has a lot of the stuff this game did, um, like something like let's say Grand Theft Auto did. Um, it was an open world game. You could explore the entire the world. It takes place in the world of Nazgoth, and you could explore anywhere in Nazgoth if you wanted, assuming you had the ability to, because you get power. it's like Metroid, I guess. Like you get yeah. you get power ups and all that um, to improve your character's abilities, but. An open world game at this time when this came out was not common. Um, Mostly on PC, but when it came down to console and everything, yeah. it was not that. Yeah, I was not a, a PC gamer. So something like this coming to consoles was like really new. And on top of that, it, it did bring a lot of ground to it besides story and everything. Just open world, combat system was basic. Yeah, I, I, I personally, I like to explore stuff. like. Um, I like I like a good story. I like an adventure and all that. Uh, this game just was just my bag. Threw it through. This guy's gonna die. Oh, I just like threw a spear while I was like right in front of him. I always did love that glitch because you're not supposed to kill him with a throw in the snaps. Because when you throw an item that close um, on a level field, it just hits him a little. When you're on steps, it just instantly impels it because the collision box meets it as a level throw. Cool is that if you don't, I mean, you kill your enemies, um, you impale them, but their soul still lingers. There's even a case too. I'm sorry to cut you off. If you don't kill them and you revive them by accident, they come back as soul reavers too. Yeah, they eventually like they get to a point where they become like your main, your protagonist Raziel. He, he was in the spectral realm for so long that he became a devourer of souls. These vampires, they have the same thing. Maybe not to his degree of of uh, need for souls, but they can, they have that, and then they, if you don't kill the guys, they kill you. Yeah, and the thing that's worse about them though is, when they barely touch you, they can drain your soul while they're running away. Yeah. With Raziel, you have to... You have to, have to like, you have to keep them to like the, the Mortal Kombat, when they're just like, finish him, and they're just like dazed, and you're like, this guy, you see this guy? He's like, uh, like right now, the finish him, you gotta make sure he doesn't come back. And you have to kill them. It's, it's kind of weird describing this because, I mean, they're not alive, but I feel like I'm desensitized. Like, yeah, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you play this game, what are your thoughts on it? My thoughts about it was I'm not really a big, like, at the time I was young, I was not a big big fan of, like, long experience stuff until, like, now. I think it was Sorry that got me into that world. Because yeah. they use a lot of monologue and a lot of theatrics and everything that they play. If it's, it's very grandiose, yeah. um, I I would compare it to like like the the, X, the 90s X Men comics yeah. or just anything with Chris Claremont writing X Men, where it was it was melodramatic monologues and all that. But yeah. it, it's it, it, it's it's entertaining. There's something like there's some, I I think it's cool when if you can get away with okay I think the writing in this game is amazing. But also, I think it's indulgent because they use a lot of like monologues and grand big words and stuff, and I'm not really a fan of that. No. But when it works, but it works. It works because it was meant in this realm for a time. Yeah, yeah. And I like, I like this game still today. Like, I still play the series. I still play two yeah. defines. But there's those will be coming later. Yeah, I would, I would play if if you keep doing this, I would just play all those. <laughs> I would play all those for for, for these interviews. Just oh like yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah, like we'll definitely go back to Blood Omen too, like yeah. like the first Blood Omen, not Blood Omen two, because two doesn't really count, and we'll, if we do play it, we'll explain why. It yeah, count. that one. Okay, like I, I, I want to explain to me about this series that appeals to me personally is not just the the storytelling and structure and all that. It's just the ideas. Um, first of all, it's vampires and time travel, and it's. It's a revenge story, so that that's like like there's something primal about those those ideas, at least for for a kid, um, maybe a, a, a man child like me. <laughs> um, there's something cool about like vampires, the mythology of vampires, the idea of tra time travel. I love time travel, so I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, and 
Terminator. Like Terminator is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, this is like Terminator with vampires, man. <laughs> um, but also, there is this. Um, there are some really big themes in this. The idea of um, or moral relativism in terms of, uh, of philosophical ideals. Um, the ideas of uh, righteousness and what is righteousness, um, fate, destiny, all that. Like um, this is kind of like 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 the idea of fate, even just like in terms of. I think around this time the Matrix had come out, um, or was about to come out, and a lot of the stuff that you see in the Matrix is in this game, like the idea that are you in control of, of, of your life, or is it all all scripted? All scripted, yeah. Um, in, in terms of, and th that's with the series as a whole. Um, in terms of this game, the idea that oh, man, the camera sucks here. Hold on. I think that was one um, of the drawbacks, but that was fine. The, the camera works, I think, um, but... Sorry, I keep swearing at your show. It's fine, though, you're going to be bleeped. I'm going to find a cool sound for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's based on this game, it'll be bleeped for you. Um, but... How, like, the motivation behind revenge is, is something I had never thought about until this point, and I think... This game in particular treated it in a very mature way in how it can consume you and realize that, that you know the person who caused you to want revenge has their own agenda. Where and, and that's that's kind of a weird thing because you really see it like it's like something like Kill Bill. Yeah. Um, uh, what is it? Something like Kill Bill where it's like you see the bride and she's murdered along with her family, and that's it, that's all you need. And that works for that story. But this is a new take on something that's just kind of on a primal level where everyone can agree, like, oh, like, yeah, if that happened to me, I, I would want revenge as well. And in, in terms of the, the bigger narrative, the, the meta story within, within this, this, this series itself, um, it, it, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but uh, this is how how this game opens up is how Blood Omen opens up, yeah. because your character is killed, and they are revived, and they want revenge, but how how they go about that in terms of the characterization of the protagonist, it's, it's completely different. It is. And, and it shows a lot about how, uh, how you think, how, you, how execution is important, and how it can make or break an idea. Um, no, no, it's exactly right. Like if you play Blood Omen One, they both come out the same way. They both die, and they both want revenge. But the thing is, the way the series between these two ended differently. If you play Blood Omen and get the ending of Blood Omen, you see how, and you have to get the wrong ending to be honest, to, for this game to work. And I can't really tell you what the wrong ending is if you're curious about playing Blood Omen. The, the dark side ending, if you yeah. want. The, the way Raziel ends his story in the series is different from Kane. And it shows them that they both started the same, but you know which one's a different man. Yeah. Which, 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 which person actually basically did the right thing. Yeah. You see, like, I've, I've, I realize I've grown in terms of, like, my, my, my confidence. When I was a kid and I played this game, this part, I ever had high trepidation because I was afraid of getting killed because these guys were bigger than me. But now I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> like, look, I'll hit him with a rock. Like, killer like rock. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to maybe ask you one more thing before we have to cut it short. Um, if you ever get the possibility to play a newer Legacy of King, if she wrote it again, Henry Henry. Henry Henry, if she wrote a new series and she could actually continue off the one game we wanted so badly based on. What was teased? Was teased. I just killed Henry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important to keep the humans alive. You'd be surprised how much they help you yeah. later in the game. But if she continued it, because she was. She was dropping ideas after a child. Oh, yeah. oh no, I, 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 I know I know all about her proposed ideas because I, I follow this game like, like religiously. This is like, if I was a deadhead, this is my grateful dead of things. Um, 
And I read all the like the special features, if you will, because in the later games they, they include or in this one they included like the voice recording sessions and all that. And I thought that was really cool. But the, the production, like uh, toss storylines, I I'm like a sucker for that. Um, I would I would play that. Um, I don't think it's a possibility now because it's not owned by the original cre uh, rights holders or no. company. Um, I do want if if you when you release if anyone out there is watching this has the comics send them to me because I want to read those because they're hard to find. Oh yeah, I I I found one but it was not not cheap. <laughs> yeah. My brother Melkaya is me. Uh, this is like the PC version of the of the game. Oh yeah, yeah. That's all, why I, it's the whole PC campaign. Um, that's why I like the Dreamcast version because it has all the PC stuff. It doesn't have the PlayStation. No, no, no. I mean, like, remember there was the demo that we had where it was oh, just yeah. just this this first part. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're gonna end it right here. Yeah. I know you would like to see him fighting that boss, but. Yeah, but, but, it, but I really like the, the, the designs for the monsters and all that. Like, just this, this game is like, ah, oh, it's my life. It is. It's, it's, no, it's I mean, my unlife. It's part. It's part of our childhood. We grew up with the whole series. Um, yeah, I I recommend this game to anyone who's into, you know, high art fiction, <laughs> if you can call it, if you can call it that. Um, I don't know what else to say. I feel like I've chatted it up a storm. No, it's great. I, I like. I like. This yeah. is where I'm just, where I was going. I'm passionate about this game. The, that's the what, way. and that's what I really want from you know yeah. later on the series. This is what I'm really looking forward to. I love hearing stories from other gamers and their favorite games. And this is a good example. So if you like to, if you like to be part of my show, you could you could send me a, a message on Facebook or send me a comment below on YouTube, and I will answer. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Share, share the, share the hell out of it. Also, go check out my, my stuff. Uh, you can find me at mark.ldude.tumblr, and you can find me at Mark Dude on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, yeah, we can talk about this game, or we can talk about comics. Like uh, at the time of this recording, the Captain America Hydra situation just came out. I think we should cut it right there because I don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to date this. Like, I don't want to date this, and I don't want to storm right now. Yeah. But thank you for being on the show. Yeah, no and, uh, problem. And enjoy the game. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'll I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this Dreamcast and all that. Go for it, you, Cap. Bye, guys. You have a good you have a good one. See ya. See you out there.